Raising Kanye by Donda West with Karen Hunter. Life Lessons from the Mother of a Hip Hop Superstar. Forward by Kanye West. I've known my mom since I was zero years old. She is quite dope. What stands out most about her is not only how she taught me, but her willingness to learn new things and that she listens to me. When some people become parents, they are so busy teaching, they sometimes close off to learning. A lot of parents are so stuck in their ways, they can't adjust to new things. You have to be in touch with what your kids are doing. You have to be a part of them. If parents could be more open-minded to their children, more open to what their children are into, like their music, their clothes, and their interests, maybe they could raise children who become open-minded adults. That's how my mom was, and I was open to what she told me because she always valued what I had to say. I remember one time we were having a discussion about proper English. I was saying something and asked her if it was proper. She told me it depends. Language is situational. If you're in a room full of people and everyone is speaking Ebonics and you break out with the Queen's English, super proper, then even if you're speaking so-called correct English, you're not correct. To communicate effectively, you have to speak so that people can understand you. I remembered that when I wrote my song, and she in turn lived it. It was nothing for her to break out into perfect Ebonics. What up, dog? When I wrote that song, Hey Mama, about my mom, I worked on it for months. I wanted to make it as great as she is. I wanted to tell the whole world about our friendship and how it came to be. I also wanted to talk about her in the most artistic way I could. I wanted her to know how much I appreciate her for the way she raised me. You'll see that in these pages and you'll learn things that I didn't even know until I read this book. But what I did know is that because of who she is, I am able to be who I am. Introduction, Raising Kanye. He was about seven months old when I first noticed it. Actually, I didn't notice it. Someone else pointed it out to me. Kanye was sitting in his stroller in a vegetarian restaurant in Atlanta with his middle and index fingers in his mouth. He sucked those two fingers until he was eight. This lady came into the restaurant and stopped in her tracks. Look at that face, she said. I looked and she was staring at Kanye, almost mesmerized. I thought to myself, yes, he is cute, isn't he? But then he looked up at me and I saw it too. I saw what she was talking about. He looked at me with eyes that spoke. And I knew, like the old folks sometimes know when they see certain babies, he was an old soul. While he was still in my womb, I used to pray for my child. Everyone prays for their child to be healthy, to have all of their fingers and toes. I prayed that prayer, but I added to it brilliance. I prayed for my child to be healthy and brilliant. That day in the restaurant, I knew my prayers had been answered beyond my wildest imagination. I never imagined that I would be the mother of someone quite as unique as Kanye West, someone God had chosen to do something very special in the world. Looking back, I've thought many times about what makes Kanye, Kanye. Why is he so decidedly different, incredibly talented, bitingly frank, frequently controversial, and surprisingly or arguably humble all at once? Undoubtedly, who Kanye is today has a great deal to do with the way he was brought up, his exposure to the world, his relationship with his parents, the impact of his grandparents, the you go boy of friends and family, the hard work of his team, the drive within him, and most of all, the goodness of God. This book is a journey into who he is, but it is also my story, my journey as a mother, at times a single mother, just trying to raise a healthy and productive child. And somewhere along the way, the journey led to greatness. It's said that at some point you become your parent. I believe that your parents have a tremendous impact on the kind of parent you become. My father, Portwood Williams Sr., and my mother, Lucille Williams influenced my parenting tremendously. They loved and supported me. Never did I want for anything, materially or otherwise. It wasn't that we were well off, 
In fact, mother always said we were poor, but I never felt poor. In fact, I felt just the opposite. My sisters and brother and I were made to feel rich. We had material things because my parents were very resourceful. But more importantly, our lives were filled with love, adoration, and congratulations. Kids pay attention to what they don't have monetarily only when there is a real lack of everything else. In my home, my parents made us all feel that nothing came before us except God. I was the same with Kanye. He knew how highly I thought of him. He also knew I had high expectations of him. A lot of people like to coddle their children. They don't want to hurt their feelings or make them feel bad for not achieving. But if you don't set benchmarks and if you don't set that bar high, you can't expect your children to excel. My parents required every one of us not to just do our best, but to be the best. They didn't demand it in an overbearing, make you want to jump out of the window if you don't get an A sort of way. It was just quietly, but assuredly expected. Once in seventh grade, I brought home five A's and a B. My dad looked at me and said, that's good, big girl. I was the baby of four, and that was my nickname. But why did you make a B? It was a good question. I had made the B in home economics. I was never big on cooking, sewing, knitting, and all the other rather mundane, or so I thought, tasks we were required to perform in Mrs. Rick's class. I got a B because I didn't do my best and my father knew it. My father gave me $5. He would give me a dollar for every A. I didn't really care about the money as much as the praise, but this time I felt shortchanged. I had shortchanged myself because I didn't do my very best. That simple question, but why did you make a B? Was all I needed to not want to make a B again. My father always had a way of making me feel that I was the most special and the most smartest person on earth. And I never wanted to disappoint him. I'm told that when I was born, he said, I'll make her a masterpiece. I have absorbed those words into my being, in my mind, spirit, and action. I prayed that prayer to make my child brilliant in the same vein as my father wanted to make me a masterpiece. I am grateful to have had a roadmap, a blueprint to parent laid down by my mother and father. There was no need for me to reinvent the wheel. Emulating great parents is just common sense. It's a way of keeping or returning to some of those old fashioned values. Now, I didn't follow them to the letter. Sometimes if paradigm shifts were needed, I chose not to emulate them. But there was one constant. I made sure that Kanye always knew he was loved, not just doted on and indulged, but loved. That is the only advice my father ever verbally gave me about raising Kanye, and I never forgot it. When I watch Kanye today, I see him in, I see in him the courage of my dad and the strength of my mother, the diligence of his father's dad and the devotedness of his father's mother. I see the creativity of his dad, Ray West, and my sensitivity. Kanye embodies aspects of the entire West and Williams family. Sometimes impatient, he is also able to endure what many cannot. I see in him the passion of Christ, but not always the patience of Job. Just as I am my parents' child, Kanye is very much his parents' child. Like his dad, Kanye has little patience for what he thinks is unjust. If he sees a president leave human beings stranded on rooftops for days at a time, his passion and compassion will outweigh his patience. And the media is likely to witness what it calls outrageous outbursts. What is actually outrageous is the situation prompting the outburst. His fiery statements never anger or embarrass me. I know they come from not only the situation at hand, but also his legacy. As much as I have tried to give Kanye I believe in many ways I have gotten so much more from him. While this book is about raising Kanye, in many ways, Kanye has raised me. He has taught me so much. One of the most valuable lessons I learned from him was to always tell the truth. I have learned many other lessons from him as well. 
which I will share within these pages. But telling the truth at all costs is not always easy to do. We live in a society where everyone wants to put a to put on a good face, wants to look good no matter what. But the truth sometimes is very ugly, and you have to stand strong in those times when the ugly truth has to be told, when you have to come face to face with your own ugliness or the ugliness of those who might persecute you for telling the truth. I appreciate Kanye for being truthful. I really do believe that our children are not our children. They are souls that come through us to fulfill their purpose. We are here largely to give life to them so that they might give life figuratively or physically to others. I believe that we must listen to our children so that we may teach them well the lessons that God would have them learn. In fact, listening is the only way we can be effective in our teaching. Strong and effective parenting requires that we give more than lip service to the phrase out of the mouths of babes. As we train them, they teach us if we're open to it. I believe children come here with wisdom. They have gifts that are uniquely theirs. And because they are still children, they are not yet constrained the way adults often are. That's why, for example, they pick up languages easier than adults do. Kanye and I spent a year in China. While I struggled to put together simple phrases, before we left, he was able to speak and understand the language fairly well. Children don't have all of the barriers we have. They, are steeped in tradition. they aren't steeped in tradition and bogged down by rules that tell them what they cannot do or how things must be done. The best thing a parent can do for a child is to not teach them the wrong kinds of traditions those that foster fear and insecurities. Another lesson I got from Kanye was tolerance. Actually, that was something that we taught each other. Often we teach best what we most need to learn and we get the lesson back in the reflection of our children. They become our mirror to see the things we really need to work on. And Kanye was that mirror for me. He taught me to reserve judgment by calling me out every time I was judgmental. And he did simply, he did so simply by throwing my own words right back at me. He also taught me patience and how to put things into proper or the best perspective. One time we were rushing to the airport so he, he could catch a plane to visit his dad as he did every summer. Kanye insisted that we take a certain route to miss the traffic. We missed the traffic, but we were stopped by a long freight train. I was next to furious because I purchased one of those bargain rate tickets for which there was no refund if you didn't use it. And I didn't have that kind of money to waste, nor did I really have it to buy another ticket. I grew frustrated as I contemplated all of that. And I started ranting and raving about how we should just have taken the regular route and how he was going to miss the plane. Kanye just looked at me and out of his 12 year old mouth came, mom, only something that will help. Only something that will help. The words hit me as hard as that freight train would have had we kept driving not to miss that plane. I was actually stunned. It wasn't about getting the pressure off of him as much as it was about making me think. It was about me engaging in conversation that would be helpful, not ranting and rave, raving uselessly. No bringing energy to the situation that could only exacerbate it. Only something that will help. To this day, I try to live by those words. We ended up making it to the airport just in time. Kanye did catch his plane and we didn't have to buy another ticket. Now don't get me wrong, it wasn't all peaches and honey raising my son. There were many challenges, but the challenges were actually opportunities to learn and grow. They were just part of life. I became a single mother early in Kanye's life. His dad and I had been happily married for nearly four years by the time Kanye came along, but we separated when Kanye was just 11 months old and divorced when he was three. Some serious differences of opinion surfaced that were seemingly insurmountable. I joined the ranks of the majority of black mothers in this country. More than 70% of black children are born to single mothers. My story is very much like theirs in some ways, but in other ways, very different. 
We lived in cities, Atlanta and Chicago, where we had no immediate family. There was no grandmother or auntie to drop Kanye off with, no built-in babysitter to provide the comfort of knowing my child would be safe. There was no one there to pick us up and drop me off at work and Kanye at daycare when the car broke down, which happened a lot in those days. There was no dollar or two slipped in my pocket for those little extras or even a necessity. It was just Kanye and me, and I had to make it happen. One of the biggest challenges for me early on was how to discipline Kanye without killing his spirit, how to support who he was, and at the same time give him boundaries that would keep him within the parameters of what is appropriate. You may laugh and ask, Kanye, appropriate? And to that, I would reply, yes, appropriate. To me, being appropriate does not always mean conforming. Often, it means just the opposite. Sometimes refusing to conform and even confronting is not only appropriate, but necessary to change the world for the better. It was not always an easy thing to draw the line between what warranted polite behavior and agreement and what did not. I always wanted Kanye to be polite, but I was not of the mindset that anything any adult did was correct and that the child was always wrong. I believe that adults must always be respected. If not for their right actions or thoughts, certainly for their age. But I was determined not to send mixed messages to Kanye. It was my job as a parent to figure it out. When do I shout, if ever? And when do I calmly explain the situation and welcome feedback in the same calm tone? I concluded that 99.9% .9 of the time, the latter was more effective. I was lucky. I had a son who I could reason with from, the, from a very early age. He was not a timid and passive child by any means. And on more than a few occasions, I had to struggle just to control my temper. I had to calm down before I could reason with him. Another challenge was how to provide for him without totally spoiling him. I had to balance the extent to which I would allow him to have things and when I would tell him no. Rarely did I tell Kanye no. I gave him most everything he asked for, at least what I could afford. I would figure out a way to borrow from Peter to pay Paul so that ultimately he could have it. Why? Because Kanye earned it. He had to. I didn't just hand things over without requiring that he do his part, whether it was making good grades or doing his chores. And he was a good kid. He had, had he not been, things would have been different. Had he talked back to me and refused to do what I asked of him, I would not have rewarded him. To do so would have been to enable a brat, not raise a child. And that, more than anything, would have been a disservice to him. There was an occasion or two when I had to put Kanye in his place. I don't believe in children raising their voices to their parents. It simply was not acceptable. It was not an option, and Kanye always knew that. So when he tried it once or twice, I had to shut that down. I'm grateful that I was able to give Kanye most everything he wanted but I am thankful that I realized the importance of establishing the groundwork, giving kids whatever they want without first giving them everything they need. A solid foundation of morals, expectations, and discipline is not parenting. It's irresponsible and wrong. You're not showing love just because you give your child anything he or she wants. That's letting a kid grow up like a weed while you're just standing by watching and watering. I cannot I cannot take total credit for the man Kanye turned out to be. It does take a village. I couldn't have done it alone. There are many women who are single parents, but being a single mom doesn't mean you have to raise your children alone. That's my belief. Single mothers with sons are obliged to find strong, positive male figures who can be a model to their son. Kanye had a father and I made sure he spent his summers with him. He had two grandfathers who he saw as often as possible. He had uncles who he got to know and learn from. And there were my male friends who were there to lend a hand. I was very fortunate. There were several men in my life Kanye could learn from.
exchange ideas, and share his thoughts with, and from whom he could learn how to be a man. Now, there is a flip side to this. As a single mother, you have to be very careful about not exposing your children to too many men. Having a revolving door of uncles and your love interest sends the wrong message. I am a red-blooded woman with needs that I didn't sacrifice just because I had a child, but I just picked my spot. I didn't have a parade of men coming through. I had to be sure about the relationship and it had to be a relationship, not just some fling, before I had a man meet my son. I used his summers with his fathers to see what was what. That's when I did most of my dating and feeling out. One of the men who stuck around was Scotty. He taught auto mechanics at what is now Simeon Career Academy in Chicago. I met him when Kanye was 10. A year later, we were engaged and living together. Although we never married, Kanye has told me more than once that Scotty is one of the reasons he is, he is a responsible man today. Scotty was a stern man who had high standards and wouldn't let Kanye get away with anything. With me, Kanye would moan and groan about putting out the trash or doing other chores. When, Scott, when Scotty said, do it, he did it without a word. Scotty wasn't a big man in size. He was short and stocky with a deep voice but he was a strong man with good character. There is certain language spoken or unspoken between males. There is an understanding, a toughness, a demeanor that signals to boys that they cannot cross the lines with a man that they may cross with their mother. I was demanding, but in some ways still typical of many mothers. If Kanye forgot to take out the garbage, I would run to take it out, fussing all the way while with a what am I going to do with that boy attitude? Kanye knew that Scotty wasn't having it. If Scotty said put out the garbage, there was no forgetting. There are many men who have grown up to be strong, to be strong, successful, and wise without the influence of a strong man in their lives. My father being a prime example. But those men are anomalies, the exception, not the rule. I've heard some women say they don't need a man, and perhaps for them, that is true. But if they have children, I beg to differ. Children, whether boys or girls, need men in their lives. This is particularly true of boys. If you don't believe it, ask all of the men who are currently in our prison system. More than 90% of them grew up without a father or father figure. It's not just the male that is needed, however. It's a man one who will take the time to talk with your child, who has something useful to add to the equation. I believe that men are equally important in the raising of a girl too. I can't imagine what life would have been like and who I would have become had I not had my dad with me. Sometimes people do grow up to become okay people, even great people, but I'd be 95, but I'd bet 95% of the people raised without a man in their lives have some issues that they wish they didn't. Maybe they have issues they can't even identify, largely due to the absence of a father figure. From his dad, the creative intellectual, to my brother, the music virtuoso, my, to my father, the thinker and provider, to Scotty, the no-nonsense general, to a small host of good men, both family and friends, Kanye was exposed to real men, which was key in his becoming a man. He was able to flex his manhood in ways he never would have without their input. When I was approached to do a book about my experiences raising Kanye, I had never imagined actually writing a book about that. But now it makes perfect sense. I had fancied writing a book one day, but I thought it might be about my different dating experiences. I had lots of little clever titles like The Jaded Janitor, and the crazy cop. I was going to share those life experiences and hopefully come full circle to finding my ultimate soulmate. But the man I ended up writing about is the man who, to date, has had perhaps the most profound impact on my life, my son. And what makes this project extra special to me is that I get to share what he has meant, not only to me, but also to music and to a generation. A lot of people think Kanye turned out really well, 
He's such a departure from what people see as a typical rapper, with his life being so exposed to the world, at least the part that is exposed. There is still so much to share, so many questions to answer. When I was little, I used to travel and compete in oratorical contests with my church. We would compete against other churches from across the country. I would have to act out Bible passages or give speeches about a particular scripture. My dad always encouraged me. Before we'd leave for one of those many competitions, daddy would turn to me and say, big girl, you have to have a story for the people. You got your story? I have my story, Raising Kanye.